Uh, it is a real pleasure to be here. Th those of us who've had a, a part in designing this particular academy have been very excited about it coming and arriving and that you will all be here. We hope to build a lot of time in for, for discourse and conversation. We're already running a few minutes late, as, which is understandable, so I'm going to get right to my talk. I was asked to basically think about bringing us all up to the definitions we've been using as a planning group uh, and how we define sustainability, how we've been thinking about wicked problems, and just a little teaser about what it might mean for uh, the knowledge institutions and partnerships and collaboration. So I'm going to briefly say what we've been talking about is sustainability, what matters if you talk about it as a tame problem versus a wicked problem, and then just a quick comment about implications for science and getting incentives right. I'm not going to say much about that because that's really the focus of the whole, whole day. And again, it's hard to talk about this in, in the abstract, so we, I will refer to the, that which I know, which is agriculture. Those of you who are in this area know that there are as many definitions of agricultural sustainability as you can possibly want. At one time, Paul Thompson was keeping count, was over 500, but that was like a decade ago, so I assume we're over 1,000 by now. Uh, it's one of those things like freedom and beauty that maybe is best left uh, not defined real tightly. Uh, the, we worked for some time in the uh, executive committee to come to a common agreement on sustainability. And we began to talk about it as not as an endpoint, not as a destination, but as a journey, as a trajectory. You can get on a more or less sustainable trajectory. Uh, out in the uh, area where the Continental Breakfast was set up, and also I think that bar is going to set up if you suddenly have a coffee attack, it'll still be out there, hopefully. We're running a little video that we produced with the help of of uh, folks on campus to say this is what we think sustainability is as a journey. And the other important thing is that when we think about sustainability that way, it incorporates shoulds and ought to. In agriculture's case, what ought to be the future of agriculture? What should be the values incorporated in agriculture? It's about values. Uh, I just pulled this from a, a website, Nestle's website of the Sustainability Agricultural Initiative, the SAI platform. They look at sustainability in a way that was frequently talked about, the three Ps, people, planet, and prosperity or profit. Talking about trying to balance those things as they pursue the production of uh, food and fiber in a business context. I just finished being on a committee of the National Academy of Science and we produced this opus of 575 pages on sustainable agriculture for the 21st century. And we actually pulled these definitions out of, believe it or not, the Farm Bill, but we, uh, we tweaked them a little bit. And we started talking about, well, what if it's about values, then what are the objectives that you're trying to pursue with agricultural sustainability? And because we didn't have time to have the collaborative consensus working that you'd have to do to do that, we simply took them from the Farm Bill and said we thought that the goals and objectives of sustainability were something about satisfying food, feed, and fiber and fuel needs, enhancing environmental quality and resource base, and we added animal welfare and health into that, sustaining economic viability, but, but we made sure we were considering farm labor and communities, and enhancing the quality of life and social well-being. And again, we were talking about balancing, trying to see how we could find agricultural systems that had more win-wins where you were doing a better job of balancing and less win-loses where you had more serious trade-offs, trying to look at the systems that might get you closer to that intersection uh, of the Venn diagram. And actually in the Academy report, we put it down into criteria, some of which were, we, were asking, we were asking whether the ag systems we were looking at were productive, minimized waste, that was the definition we used for efficient, were resilient and adaptive, that is they were robust, and they took advantage of synergies. So we were looking for systems where you had environmental outcomes that were positive, labor outcomes that were positive, productive outcomes that were positive, again the win-wins. So with that as background, let me just frame sustainability first as a tame problem and then as a wicked problem. Tame problems, uh, and apologies to those who people know this uh, better and deeper than I, but we have to start somewhere. Uh, 
clear problem definition, clear solutions. Problem is very stable, doesn't tend to morph over time. Uh, you know whether you've solved the problem or not, so the outcome is re relatively definitive. And because there tends to be widely shared values about the desirability of potential outcomes, in many cases society is reasonably content to let the academy and experts determine what are uh, both causes and solution. And the academy and experts are aided by the fact that either there's very little uncertainty about causes and effect, or it's really clear how you might begin to resolve the uncertainty about causes and effect. If you take two of those dimensions, which tend to uh, divide tame from wicked problems, one is does society have a fair amount of agreement on the desirability of outcomes and choices, and that would be the x-axis. And is there, fair, uh, is there uncertainty about causes and effects, and that would be the y-axis. And the more you get over there in the southwest corner, uh, the tamer the problem. And I just label that as a potential example of productivity improvements. Uh, and historically, we've tended, particularly in the areas I'm familiar with, to frame even sustainability in this more tame type of framing. Through much of my program as environmental economists, we tend to talk about agricultural sustainability as having enough food at the right price over long periods of time. And if you did that, then you were sustainable. And we call it, uh, actually Paul labeled it resource efficiency. In environmental economics, we call it weak sustainability. And the reason it's called weak is as long as you can keep your quantity of food at the right price over long time horizons, lots of substitutions are possible. So if you run down your natural, say, soil fertility, and you're able to substitute with uh, man-made fertilizers, you're still sustainable as long as you keep your yields up. So it's basically about having enough. And we've been pretty successful at that in the developed world to the point of surpluses. So we take these problems and, and we still do a lot of this. And it's, it's still appropriate that we do uh, quite a bit of this. Uh, the problem parts, though, can be divided in isolation. We can uh, place it in different departments. Engineering gets some. Crop and soil science gets some. Uh, the agricultural economists get some. And we can use the normal methods of our discipline to do our work, but those parts will integrate back together with some sort of overall solution. We tend not to debate what ought to be when we do this. Uh, we don't ask, should we, is it appropriate? Should we be substituting fertilizer for natural fertilities? We tend, and this is hard talk because these are all tendencies, we tend not to engage stakeholders very often in that kind of research. And we tend to say, well, we've got to do uh, the problem, make it simple. We really can't look at all the goals and trade-offs with other sustainability goals. Well, those of you in this room know that that view has definitely been challenged for some time now. First, by ecological challenges as we began to understand ecological systems and functional stability. Again, Paul Thompson's word, functional integrity, the ability of the human-dominated systems to regenerate is one of the, the goals that we're asking out of agricultural systems right now. Environmental economics, we tend to call this strong sustainability, meaning that we don't allow a lot of substitutions for natural capital and still call it sustainable. And basically, it's about pursuing those other sustainability goals. And the more you pursue those other sustainability goals, as well as productivity, the more wicked you become. And when I say wicked, I don't mean evil, despite my little figure here. And I don't mean it like your students go, Jim TG, you wicked smart phone you got there. <laughs> and they mean that's really a great phone, and they wish they could afford one. Um, what we mean is a problem that's really difficult to resolve. This is not 